How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge 5000 and of course in this video we're going to talk about the Atlantic hurricane season and determine if we could see our next tropical cyclone develop in right around the Caribbean because if we were to take a look at the global tropics hazards outlook forecast over the next two weeks for the weeks ending November 7th and the week ending November 14th we do see the Climate Prediction Center is forecasting a pretty large area, pretty much the entirety of the Caribbean, to at least have the possibility of tropical cyclone development. So, of course, in the Caribbean islands, you need to pay very close attention to um, the satellite imagery over the next several days because we could easily see that trigger that could develop tropical storm vents um, it right around your area. And with the amount of moisture that's um, that's right over the Caribbean and Central American region at this time. I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we do still have maybe one or two more tropical storms um, left to develop in the Caribbean before the hurricane season ends. So you definitely need to be aware of this over the next several days as some of the computer models are leaning towards developing a tropical cyclone um, right around the Caribbean. So here's a current look at the water vapor imagery for much of the northern Atlantic and of course we still have Hurricane Tammy that's pretty much moving very fast to the northeast at this time thanks to a trough that's moving through and we do see that it's very asymmetrical. It's been asymmetrical for most of its lifetime thanks to the strong amount of easterly upper level or westerly upper level flow it's been dealing with bringing a lot of the dry air further um, um, eastward towards this storm system which is why the western side is very dry and it's expected to weaken over the next few days it could easily dissipate however we have the computer model still having a high amount of uncertainty regarding um, Hurricane Tammy and while that might not necessarily be a big issue when it comes to land interaction because it, um, either scenario it takes it's unlikely to impact land however it could be big in determining if we could see our next tropical storm in the Caribbean which I'll get to um, in more detail in a little bit but we do see plenty of dry air just to the west of it and what's interesting is that this dry air is very cool and it's interacting with a very warm and tropical air mass that's located in the Caribbean and that could potentially be the trigger for an enhanced Ants. Um, risk of convective activity um, in of developing right over the Caribbean and Central America because when we see a cool air mass interact with a very warm and humid air mass that promotes a lot more lift that promotes a lot more of an upward motion in, um, right over the Caribbean for more convective activity to develop and of course our chance of a tropical cyclone to increase so I do believe that this cool air mass we're seeing move southward into the Caribbean could potentially develop our next tropical storm by pretty much acting as a little bit of a catalyst by enhancing the instability for a tropical storm to develop so this is definitely something we're going to need to keep in mind while the, this dry air will certainly prevent tropical cyclones um, from developing in the Gulf of Mexico and the northern Atlantic most likely it could only enhance the possibility right over the Caribbean so take a look at the latest run of the GFS model. So we have Hurricane Tammy right here and a pretty strong ridge that's centered just off the coast of the northeast. And this pressure gradient we're seeing from this warm core tropical hurricane along with this um, cooler um, polar ridge, um, that pressure gradient is creating a strong northeasterly flow that's bringing a lot of the dry air further southward, which like I said, could only enhance the possibility of convective activity for, um, in developing right over the Caribbean. But moving forward with the forecast, we see that the GFS model is does eventually expect um, Hurricane Tammy to weaken. It expects this ridge to pretty much catch Hurricane Tammy and move it south um, southwestward um, for a little bit. But eventually the dry air will just be too much a handle um, despite the fact that it's still over relatively warm waters. Um, dry air will just is expecting to fizzle out this storm at least 
least in the GFS model's case. And uh, of course, it's dealing with a strong amount of wind shear as well, which certainly will help Hurricane Tammy intensify. However, what's interesting with Hurricane Tammy and why this will play a role in developing a tropical storm in the Caribbean is the fact that um, Hurricane Tammy is creating a weakness in ridging in this area. So all this moisture you see right over South America would um, be expected to move northward into the Caribbean because, of course, um, low pressure systems want to move towards an area where the pressure is also lo lower, not necessarily towards a higher pressure. That's just how basic physics works. Um, an area of higher pressure would always lean a little bit more to focus in on an area that has lower pressure and in this case it's where Hurricane Tammy is where you couldn't ask for a lower pressure than what you're seeing right now with a pressure hovering at 977 millibars so of course all this energy will want to converge towards this area which means that this moisture will move northward and as the convective activity moves northward of course it's going to encounter the very warm Caribbean waters for the potential to exist for one of these um, areas of convective activity to develop into a tropical storm. And while Hurricane Tammy um, will eventually dissipate, the damage is already done. We already see much of the convective activity right over the Caribbean. And it's only, and it could be only a matter of time before we see just enough thunder shower activity for a low level center to develop and potentially develop into a tropical storm. We see that the GFS model does this as we approach the early part of November. And it does take nearly a worst case scenario type track where we see uh, um, this storm system have a pressure that's right around major hurricane status at this point or a uh, pressure that's equivalent to a hurricane that's um, major that's right around category three category four hurricane but of course is very far out in the future 270 hours out but even if we were to take a look at a more manageable forecast time period we see that the low level center develops as early as right around the seven to eight day mark which is still in the long term future Future, um, that, that I definitely won't act like it's very much in the short term future to say the forecast is certain. It's still relatively in the long term, but with all this convective activity that's the um, that's expected to linger around the Caribbean over the next few days, I feel like it's only a matter of time before we could see a tropical cyclone develop um, as um, the sea surf temperatures are still very warm over the Caribbean and there's just a lot of convective activity. There won't be a lot of dry air to um, hinder the po um, this possibility as well and if there is any dry air like what we see in the northwest of it, it's only going to enhance the convective activity thanks to the instability this cooler air mass will bring so it's definitely um, something to keep in mind we're gonna um, but if we were to take a look at the European model um, real quick it's also um, the European model is showing a very different scenario and this is where I want to point out how Hurricane Tammy could affect um, the fate of the of um, tropical storm vents or potential tropical storm vents in the Caribbean because the thing is with the European model the European model does not expect Hurricane Tammy to take a track further southeastward um, and in our southwestward instead it wants to take the storm towards the southeast and why this will play a big role is because in the European model scenario if it were to take a track further eastward it'll more likely be a more intense storm because it'll avoid the dry air and it'll and if it were to move eastward then it'll encounter a more unstable environment for um this storm system to maintain its strength it, um, let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly um let me go to the 12z run for the more long-term forecast so if we were to take a look at the european models forecast we see that um hurricane tammy would move northward there um the european model would expect just enough of weakness in ridging and as it does move um slightly northeastward it'll encounter the cooler air mass that's associated with this mid latitude low that's just off of europe that will enhance the instability enhance the overall strength of this storm system and what that will do is that that'll create a constant northerly flow to bring the dry air further northward um, down towards the Caribbean and while I did just say that the, the dry cool air mass will could potentially um, enhance the possibility of tropical cyclone development by enhancing the instability and lift 
there comes a point where the dry air just becomes too much for that possibility of a tropical storm to exist where we see that north the northwesterly flow would be a low or the northeasterly flow would be a little bit too strong and bring a little bit too much dry air for the Caribbean for the possibility of a tropical cyclone to exist. Taking a look at the humidity, we do see that this um that the remnants or what likely will still be Hurricane Tammy would bring a lot of this dry air further southward and we see that there isn't nearly enough moisture for tropical storm vents to develop. So depending on the track of Hurricane Tammy, if the European mall scenario was correct, where it expects Hurricane Tammy to maintain its strength and take a track a lot further eastward, that'll enhance the northerly flow, enhance the dry air, and decrease the chance of tropical storm Tammy. But if the GFS model's scenario is correct, where it expects um, Hurricane Tammy to pretty much dissipate to where the northerly flow won't be as strong for the dry air to take over the Caribbean, then the then tropical storm vents would be more likely over the Caribbean. Still too uncertain to say, but this will be key. And the good news is that at least in the short term, um, we won't need to wait long for the, the, um, this forecast to become more certain because this um, track forecast, um, or at least this track uncertainty, will be answered within the very near future, between 48 to, 50, um, to 72 hours from now. So by right around the Friday, the Saturday time frame, that's when we should get a little bit more certainty of where Hurricane Tammy will go, whether it'll just dissipate towards the west or just um, linger around um, to the east. So it won't be long till we get a more accurate forecast regarding the northerly flow associated with Hurricane Tammy. Um, but I'll definitely keep you guys updated once the certainty rises for the possibility of a tropical storm in the Caribbean. But in the European model's case, we clearly see the effects of Hurricane Tammy taking a track further eastward. The moisture would also move a little bit further eastward and that'll only enhance um, and we'll only see an enhancement of dry air um, inhibit tropical cyclone activity um, over the Caribbean. So we're definitely going to need to keep tabs on where Hurricane Tammy will go and that will be determined by the amount of ridging just to the north of it. Um, so definitely pay close attention to how much ridging there is if you want a better indicator of where exactly Hurricane Tammy will go. But I'll keep you guys updated once we get more certainty. Of course, even if there is enough moisture right over the Caribbean, that doesn't guarantee that we're going to see tropical storm vents um, 100% because, of course, we need to pay close attention to how strong the upper level winds will be right over the Caribbean. Um, however, it seems like the GFS model is leading towards an upper level high to be located over this area um, to lighten the wind shear just enough for tropical cyclone development. That could easily change, um, but... Um, during this time of the year, I'd expect the wind shear to be lightest right around the um right around the um southern Caribbean. So I so I I'll say that most likely the wind shear will be light enough for tropical cyclone activity. Um, if we were to see the moisture um right over this area, but again. Um the, um, the hurricane season, of course, and the forecast change very quickly. So we're going to need to see if the GFS model still maintains this forecast. I'll certainly keep you guys updated. And here's a quick look at the GFS unsolvable members over the next 10 days. And we do have several low pressure systems developing right over the Caribbean based on what the unsolved members are stating. Most of them are weak. However, it seems like it, um, it'll most likely have a better shot of rapidly intensifying in the more long term future. So although the unsolved members are showing weak scenarios right now, that could be a different story um, in the more long term future. And of course, since it's so um, since we're still like 240 hours out from these ensemble members taking shape here, there's still a lot of changes with the forecast. So let me keep an eye on how the ensemble members shift their forecast over the next few days. But that's it for now, guys. I thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe for more weather related content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.